Hey, good morning. It's a Friday morning. It's good to be with you today as we uh, start our day together uh, reading God's Word. Uh, we just finished up Galatians yesterday, so we're going to, um, I decided we're going to keep rolling and rooted in Christ. We're going to just roll on into Ephesians. So um, these, these four books of the Bible, um, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, are really some of the best books in all Scripture, in my opinion. Because, you know, they used to pick at me at Asbury. Um, about my, what my favorite verse of the Bible was. It usually was whatever I just read was my favorite verse. And so, uh, you know, I just told you how much I love Galatians. But now we're going to get to Ephesians. And Ephesians is pretty awesome, too. So we're going to uh, spend some time in this. And then we get through Ephesians. And Philippians is pretty awesome. And then we do with that. And Colossians is pretty awesome. So um, each book has a different emphasis and a different thing because, remember, Paul is writing these letters to specific churches. That's one of the things that is different about Paul. In the New Testament, you have your letters. So uh, you have your your Pauline epistles, which are very specific, um, either to a specific church, Romans, it's to the church in Rome, uh, Ephes, uh, Ephesians, the church in Ephesus, or to a specific person, Timothy or Titus. So Paul's letters are always, are always personal um, to a church or to a person, you know, teaching to the church, pastoral in many ways to the person. Then you have your other letters, which are called the Catholic letters later on in the Bible, um, Hebrews, James, 1st, 2nd Peter, like that, which are uh, called Catholic because they're, 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 they're typically not written to a specific church or to a specific person. Uh, they're more general uh, instruction to the church at large, um, particularly Hebrews. Hebrews is a wonderful book. We may just, hey, we may just roll into Hebrews when we get done with this. Um, but today, Paul is writing. Uh, writing this, the, he's writing to, to a church. The church in Ephesus is who his audience is. So this is a very specific um, letter to a specific group of people. So I, I want to read to you. We're going to read today uh, Ephesians. Uh, we're going to read chapter one, verses one through fourteen of this chapter. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God. Notice he always is going to reiterate that he is an apostle. An apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of our God. In other words, God's at work. That's key right there to where we're going the rest of this book. To the saints who are in Ephesus, to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Christ Jesus, according to the good pleasure of his will, to pray of his glorious grace that he freely bestows upon us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he lavished upon us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ, as a plan for the fullness of time, to gather up all things under him, things in heaven and things on the earth, in Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and his will, so that we, who are the first to set our hope in, on Christ, might live to the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promise of the Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward the redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. So, if you, remember, if you remember from Galatians, Galatians' entire point in many ways was about um, speaking to the importance of salvation through grace through faith. You know, the whole with the whole thing with the Judaizers, the whole thing with those who were um, who were trying to earn salvation through works. That was really the entire point of Galatians. You are not saved by works; you're saved by grace through faith. Not saved by works, grace through faith. The whole thing with Hagar and Isaac and Ishmael. That that's what that is what. Um, Galatians really hones in on is that we are saved not by our own efforts or by our own works. We're saved by grace through faith. So um, Galatians really, this is not going to be a perfect phrase, but Galatians, even though it is letting us know that we are not saved by our works, it, it, it is fixating upon the path of salvation, that we're saved by grace through faith. So it, Galatians gives us two, two paths, as you will, for, for salvation. One path is a path of law. One path is a path of grace. And Galatians tells us that if you take the path of law, you're not living by faith as God desires. So the path of salvation that runs by the law is not the true path of salvation. So that's, and for Galatians, it's the path of faith. 
So you choosing faith in Christ Jesus, that's where salvation comes from. So Galatians is kind of laying out in front of us those two paths that we have a choice to make about by which way we're saved. Law, which isn't true salvation. Faith, which is true salvation. So Galatians is encouraging us and pleading with us to choose the path of faith. Choose the path of faith. You're saved by faith. You're saved by faith. Galatians is about us choosing the path of faith. So Galatians, even though it isn't, it's very clear to say that we're not saving ourselves and that we do not say that salvation is not of our efforts or our works, but Galatians really does fixate upon the path of salvation, and that path is that of faith. It kind of fixates upon our response, upon what we do. Now, what we may do may not be works. We may not be doing works, but we are doing something, even if that doing is simply faith. So, in many ways, Galatians looks at salvation in some ways almost through a human understanding or through a human component. What do we do? You were saved by faith. Why you you, you perplex me? Why did you? Why, if you started in faith, why do you expect to finish in works? As Paul says, so Galatians talks about that. Ephesians comes from a different perspective. So in this first section here, who's the point of emphasis upon? It's not upon us getting our salvation by works. It's not upon us getting our salvation through faith. But what is Ephesians what about? Verse 4, just as he chose us in Christ Jesus before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless in him before love. Verse 5, he destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ according to the to the to the good pleasure of his will verse uh verse uh um, verse 11 in Christ we've also obtained an inheritance having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and his will now we're not going to delve too too much into into free will versus predestination um i i go with what paul says at one point those who we foreknow he predestined so i think god knew the choice we were going to make and god God's sovereignty extends to our choices. Somehow, somehow our free will that we have fits into God's sovereignty. I don't know how that works. I'm not going to try to tell you how that works. There's smarter folks than me who haven't figured this out yet. So this old boy from Boba Chitta is not going to unlock the mystery of God's sovereignty and free will today. Not going to happen. If you're looking at me to figure that out for you, I think I'm a pretty smart fellow. I'm not that smart. So I'm not, even, but here's what I want you to hear. Sometimes we, sometimes those of us, particularly of us that are, that are Wesleyan, and that are Methodist, swing so far talking about our free will and our choice that we can forget that God's sovereign. We can forget that God's at work. We can forget that God is at work in all of this. As Romans 8, 28 says, all things work for good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. As Genesis 50, 20 says, what man intended for evil, God intended for good. So somehow, one of the mysteries of faith is how God uses our free will and our free choices to align perfectly with his sovereign plan because God is at work. So Ephesians lets us know, hey, not only did you not save yourself, not only did you not save yourself, but the fact that you believe in faith, that's because of God. So even you choosing faith isn't some great righteous choice that you made, but even your choice of faith is something that God did. And some, some, it, it, it's the power of God in that, and that God is the one who did this. God's always sovereign. God's always in control. God's always at work. God's always doing these things. So even your faith, even your faith that you think is yours, that you made the right choice to believe in faith and that you did it, no. Even that, even that's not you. Even that's God. Ephesians is going to let us see, in some ways, salvation from God's perspective. Salvation from God's view. Salvation from God's point. Why are we saved? Well, we're saved, as verse uh, verse 4, the first Bible says, he, according to the good pleasure of his will. That God's bringing glory to himself. God's bringing glory to himself. Sometimes we feel like there's such pressure on us not only to get it right, but to even choose right. Ephesians is reminding us that it's not all up to us, that God to control, that God's at work, that God knows what he's doing in all these things. Even our faith, even our choice of faith, it's not our choice. It's not our plan. It's God's. 
So you can trust in him. Trust in God today. Because God's at work. Don't make it all about yourself. Don't make don't make it all don't make yourself the center of all things. God is at work. You can trust in him today and each day. Hey, praying for you guys today. Have a great uh have a great um a great Friday, a great weekend. Hey, come worship with us Sunday at St. Matthew's. It's gonna be an awesome day. I cannot wait to worship with you. We got a lot of exciting things happening, a lot of changes, a lot of good changes. Um, we got a spot in our church just for you with your name on it. So come worship with us this Sunday. Hey, have a great weekend. I hope to see you Sunday. And I will see you uh, back Monday morning as we continue in Ephesians. Have a great weekend. Thanks for watching.